Ahead of the vote, analysts here in Bucharest expected the vote to be incredibly tight. In the end, 238 lawmakers voted in favour of this no-confidence decision. That five more than was needed to hit the criteria needed to overthrow the government of uh, Viorica Dancula and her Social Democratic Party. Now, to put things into perspective on just how tight uh, this vote was expected to be, one lawmaker who's an opponent of the Social Democratic government even arrived to the parliament that you can see behind me here via ambulance and was heavily using crutches to cast his ballot. Now over the last few days the Social Democrats and Prime Minister Dan Schiller has been putting heavy pressure on lawmakers to vote in their direction promising plenty of cash to local municipalities to have them vote in their favour. Of course though clearly it seems to be a case of perhaps too little and too late. Things really took a turn for the worse for Prime Minister Dantula and the Social Democrats back in May. They suffered heavy losses in European elections and since then things really went from bad to worse. In August they lost the support of their junior coalition partners, the Alliance of Liberals and Democratic Party. This was a decision made after huge discrepancies that this coalition had, especially when it came to a decision on who the government would appoint to be uh, the presidential nominee in next month's presidential vote. Now, this all comes despite the fact that the Romanian economy has been performing rather robustly over the last few years. The World Bank estimating that this year the economy will grow by 4.2%. Uh, percent. But despite that, the European Union has several huge issues with the government in Romania, largely when it comes to what they see as the erosion of the rule of law, as well as problems that they see as the government not doing enough to tackle systemic corruption. Analysts here in Romania say that it would have been a huge embarrassment for the opposition had they failed uh, to get the numbers for this no confidence vote. But of course, all eyes will now turn to Romania's uh, president, Klaus Johannes, and he will be the kingmaker, the dealmaker to find the next prime minister going forward, of course. This won't be an easy task. It's largely seen by analysts that the front runner uh, will be Ludovic Orban. He's the leader of the Liberal Party. Now, Despite him, by according to analysts, having the most popular support in the country at the moment, he only controls about 15% uh, percent of uh, the parliament behind me. So it will be an incredibly difficult position for the Liberal Party, even if they are uh, elected to lead this transitional government, to be able to keep it together ahead of national elections scheduled for December 2020. Earlier this year, the European Union threatened to take Romania to court when it comes to the, what they're seen as a lack of action to stem uh, corruption in the country, as well as their efforts to roll back the rule of law as the European Union saw it. So for the transitional government, it will be a clear priority to uh, try and achieve that, certainly in the eyes of the European Union. Of course, Romania doesn't have access to the Schengen uh, zone at the moment, which means that uh, a lack of access to passport free travel around the bloc, which of course is a key priority for Romania. But in order to achieve that, the European Union wants to see huge changes when it comes to efforts to clamp down on corruption, as well as to undo some of the policies that they saw that they believe undermined the judicial system in the country. So any uh, new government put in place will certainly be tasked with trying to tackle those two issues if they want to see better relations with Brussels going forward.